I am your host, Matt King, with my co-host here, Mike Sheffer. And today we have our first guest here in our new studio, the one and only Jared Bailey. Hello. You may know Jared from the Dropouts podcast with Zach Justice, or you may know him from his awesome remixes and songs, <laughs> Jer Bear. Yeah, Jer Bear. What's, oh, what's your little tag that you have sometimes on, like, uh, Jer Bear, take it there? Or... Yeah, that's exactly it. My little producer tag. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like uh, Mike Will made it. Yeah, I feel like just everyone has one. You know, it's like the the signature. And uh, I was trying to – my favorite one is uh, Ronnie. It's like – it's from – uh, Jersey Shore. It's okay. like, it's Sammy, I think is her name. She's like, oh my God, Ronnie. That's my favorite one. Oh, you just like to toss it in like every now and then? Or and just, the, that's oh. like, no, that's, that's an actual else's. producer's. Oh, that's my someone bad. else's. So I used, uh, you ever heard of like, it's like Rubber Duck AI or something like that. I don't know. They have a bunch of like cartoon voices. And I used uh, the voice of Bubbles from uh, Powerpuff, Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> yeah. And so that's that's the voice of Jer Bear. Take it there. Oh, oh yeah. that's cool. I love that. Yeah. That's a little hidden Easter egg. Have you ever told anyone that? No. That's, Damn. Oh, that's a big reveal exclusive, exclusive here at Hoot and a Half. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the people tune in for, exclusive Jer Bear content. <laughs> I hope so. How's your day going? Pretty good, you know. Very chill day. Uh, I woke up, went to the gym. Kind of fucked up my back, if I'm being completely honest. Was it back okay. day? It was, yeah, back and buys today. Have you ever done me. like a personal one-on-one -on -one trainer, like at the gym? Not in a long time. So actually, when I was younger, I've always been like heavy set, uh, and so I was like. When I started training, I was like 260 or something like that. 260? But like before my growth spurt. And so I was like 5'8 and 260, like a chunky kid. <laughs> and uh, one day I just like, my mom actually, she was thinking about retiring and what she wanted to do after retirement. And personal training was like kind of her, like she wanted to explore that. So she got a part-time job at a gym and she met this trainer and then she put me in touch with him. And he whooped my ass. And like the first day I went to go train with him, he had a green shirt on with a text that said, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, you know, <laughs> like a fucking Hulk. And uh, sure enough, yeah, he pushed me. I threw up after my first oh my session. God. Like it was so bad. Wow. And you kept going back after I that? You're like, oh, this is back. what I need to do now. Yeah. Well, I have this like chronic fear of letting other people down. Right. Yeah. Which is my reason why I don't want to like even do the free training session yeah. because I don't want to keep seeing them around like at the gym <laughs> being like, hey, when are we going to train? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. But is he still out there training? He's still out there. Shout out to uh, Jeremy. Jeremy. Coach Jeremy. Hopefully yeah. you're still making kids throw up out there. <laughs> No, he was he was amazing though, and so it, he put me on like a, a fast track. I I went from like 260. I started the summer before my senior year of high school, and uh, by by the end of high school, I was like 170. Wow. Yeah. So I had gotten to the point, but then I didn't know about like nutrition and stuff. So I I'd gotten too low, and and I had also hit my growth spurt. So I went from five eight to six one, and uh, so then I was I was too low at that point. <laughs> um, and so now I've bounced back to like I float between like one ninety and two hundred, um, but taking better care of myself, eating right, and so yeah. more muscle and stuff like that now, which is nice. Well, hell yeah. And no longer five eight. No. And no longer 5'8". That yeah. definitely Shout helps. out to the short kings. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jared, I know that we've talked about this on Unfiltered, but I don't know if Mike really knows like the whole origin story of you coming into planet Earth. <laughs> do you know this? I do have well, one, you know he I has... have a question. Yeah, one of my questions is you have two moms. I have two moms. Which one do you love more? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. fucked. I could, if you ask me this... Like ten, 10 years ago, I could have, I would have had an answer for That's you. That's crazy. <laughs> no, and it's just because, okay, so like, I, whenever this I is refer, a joke question, by the no, way, no, you no, don't no, need I to know, answer. I know, but honestly, it's come full circle, and so I feel okay sharing this now. But like, so my mom, she's a great mother, best mom ever, right? Uh, but she was never like the super tough disciplinarian. Right? Which mom are we talking about right oh, now? Oh, okay. So do, do you, Julie, <laughs> I always refer to as mom. That's my birth mom. Oh, okay. Right? right. So it's Julie and April. April's been in my life most of the time now. And so 
but I just have always called her April. Uh, and so Julie, my mom, uh, was never the tough disciplinarian. April, when she came in, she was. She was like she a was military Coach boot camp. Yeah, she's <laughs> Coach Jeremy just at home. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so she just fucking put me in my place. And I, not that I hated her, but like, I was just like, oh, this girl sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a little shit though? Not a little shit, just like undisciplined, okay. you know, a little bit. And so, like, I was still nice, still kind. What were you not disciplined about? Making the bed? Yeah, cleaning my room, doing laundry, doing dishes, stuff like all the normal household mm-hmm. stuff. And so, like, she came in and uh, she, like, took over the laundry. And for the longest time, she would do the laundry, bring it to my room, and I just wouldn't put it away. I would just take it out of the basket. I Matt like, does Go. that to this day with his. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Throw them under the bus. That's why I got a wife now, all right? <laughs> That's what she does. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But she hated it because then I would just throughout the week, I would just all my clothes would be wrinkly, you know, and it just it royally pissed her off. And so then she it's like a super minimal punishment. Um, my life was not that tough. And so she would uh, like as punishment, she would make me sit in front of the dryer, like waiting for the clothes to dry. I couldn't watch TV, couldn't do anything. I had to also read. And then as soon as it was done, I had to take them up and put them away. And so it was like, it was little stuff like that where I was like, I had never had that structure in my life. I was like, this sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But now, now I feel like it probably shaped you into a. Oh, it, a much better human regimented, being. yeah, well-rounded yeah. person. So now it's like I set timers for the washer, timers for the dryer, go put them up right away. It oh, like, so you still don't leave clothes in the dryer? No, no. wow, I I will All do that. All thanks to April. Yeah, man. I I still definitely do that. I'll like put something in the dryer and then I'll leave it for like two days. <laughs> I always set a timer like on my phone too, so I know that like when that alarm goes off, I'm when going back to the When you're doing your laundry, you don't just throw it in and like I'll get that later. Mm. You're like I'm setting it for 40 minutes, and I better be home. I better be ready. I better Do you not have be... roommates. I have one. You have one. Yeah. Okay. I have three right now, so oh, I also have to be kind of considerate. Yeah. Of the roomies. That's like if you live in an apartment complex. When I used to live in an apartment, oh that you got to set the timer because you have the communal unit. And people the are worst just is steal them. <laughs> that, that was I my it. experience. That, you had people steal your clothes? Yeah. So like this, this is another crazy story. So like when I first moved out here, I lived in a two bedroom apartment with ten guys. Um, and but the unit or the apartment complex we were in had like a communal a two bedroom with ten people. Yeah, that's a brothel. Like, basically, <laughs> like, and, uh, and trust me, not glorified brothel at all. It was such a shitty apartment, just rinky dink. You know, you turn on the microwave and the AC at the same time, it cut the power to the entire. Oh my! Yeah, it was is so bad, but. Like, I've had my clothes taken. I've had, like, roommates, their clothes taken out of the washer or dryer, you know, if you don't go and get them fast enough. It was, oh, my God. Dude, I'll never forget when I was in college. I was in, like, a dorm at UT, and my floor was also shared with all the basketball players, all okay. right? So these were, like, some, like, you know, tough Tall athletes. Dudes, yeah. And we would all share, like, the, you know, the laundry room. And I went in there, and one load had been done washing, and I thought, oh, well, if it's done... I'm just going to take out all that stuff and then put my stuff in. And I was the sitting there, the and this athlete comes in and goes, did you do this? <gasps> and I was like, oh, yeah. He goes, yo, just p- then put it in the dryer, man, and then I'm just going to dry it. He's like, N- never touch my shit like that again. I was like, oh. <laughs> that is a big no-no, touching other people's clothes in the, yeah. in the communal machine. Also, I think it's better, though, that you didn't put it in the dryer because if you put something in the dryer that's not supposed to go in there and you ruin someone's, like, Sweater or right. Oh, I mean, I pants. wouldn't have clicked dry for it. I just he didn't want it sitting out on top. He just okay. was like, if you're that. gonna move it, put it into the dryer. Yeah. But I've also heard that hack too. Like, well, did you use quarters to pay for yes. your? Yes. Yes. You know, you can like buy if you look up the model of your washing machine or dryer. There's like a key, like the master key. They sell them on eBay for like five bucks. That's fucking genius. So you do yeah. that and you get free laundry. I wish I knew that back then. <laughs> I All know. The money, like, I was not making good money at the time. And the amount I spent on laundry, I could really use back. <laughs> yeah, it's like 225 
for the washer and dryer, you do that like you know twice a week. It's that's adding up. Those are meals. The, exactly. When and you're at that time, yeah. you know, we didn't have we we couldn't even go out to eat. We used to go down to uh, like it would do. It was so bad. We used to go down to there was like a subway and a yogurt land like right next to each other. This Good is combo. In East Hollywood, and we were so broke at the time. We would go to Subway to steal their toilet paper, <gasps> and then we would go to Yogurt Land next door and just eat all the free samples until they kicked <laughs> us out. And like that would be like a dinner sometimes. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> a little TP and Yogurt Land. Yeah. Yeah. Matinee show? Jeez. Oh, wait, but to backpedal, though, about him, he's a test tube baby. Oh, yeah. A test tube baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't really know what that means. Do you want to explain it? So my mother picked my father out of a catalog <laughs> like it was a fucking men's health or okay. something. Okay, okay. Like and a sperm donor. A sperm donor. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, no pictures, just a description. No pictures? No pictures. What of- kind of stats are you getting? Uh, he was IQ GPA. You get height, he, weight, hair you color. You do get GPA. I forget what it was, but he went to Ohio State, uh, and he was studying like physical therapy or something like that. Okay. Um, he had done uh, a tour in the Air Force. He was left-handed and six-two. Oh, that's kind of sick. Yeah, but the the only name I know him by is CB two seventy. Which, That's kind of like, which happens to be our promo code. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, CB two seventy, yeah, it's like C three PO or like something. Oh, I always it, yeah. it's his estranged brother. You know, <laughs> like, does it? Did it cost? Does it cost money to do this? Yeah, yeah, it costs okay. money, and I don't know exactly how much, but I think my mom told me she had to go like seven times for me to be conceived. Uh, and funny enough, on the seventh time, uh, they thought it wouldn't take and so they just didn't charge her for it they're like oh when you come back and that was the time that took wow we love a deal we love a discount <laughs> we <Yeah. love laughs> a discount i mean after six times like yeah. you've put in the money you get the stamp get baby. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you pay for six the seventh one's free <laughs> exactly. she had her stamp card okay so this means that she went to like a place they used his sample mm-hmm. and then put it inside of her yeah isn't that what they just outlawed in Alabama? Whoa, uh, yeah, what? I believe. Yeah, IVF. Well, is that, is that IVF? IVF? In- it's not IVF. IVF. Three is dudes where talking you- about women's reproductive health. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Actually, I'm not really sure on the specifics of IVF. I, don't I know think either. that's where you're like you're putting more eggs into the ovulation, like that you're trying to increase your egg count. I think. I don't know, man. I think we're rocking on thin ice here. <laughs> I could not tell you. Um, we don't have a fact checker on the show, so please forgive us. But, but do, uh, has this was it C three seventy or C B two seventy? C B two seventy. Pay attention, Matt. Um, has he fathered though other yeah. people as well? Yeah. So I just did. Uh, I was curious. Not like I've never had a desire to meet him. You know, just because I've had a parent structure in my life and just like it's not like the story of like he ran out on me you know or something yeah just i've just never had him so i've never had the desire to Mm -hmm. like find him but i was just curious about my background and uh so i took 20 uh, the 23 me test last christmas or something that was my christmas present and all of a sudden uh, I start getting just like all these random half relatives popping up. Whoa! He was a hot pick from the catalog. Apparently, yeah. Wow. And so it's like I, I've got like s- at least through Twenty Three and Me, I found like seven half siblings. Um, I've managed to contact I think three of them, and then I've got like a. I mean, I've already had a shit ton of cousins out there that I know of, and then just even more coming in. Anybody that. cool? Like uh, Ashton if, Kutcher? Yeah. I what wish. if you found out that like you were related to just like Dude, I don't, uh, that would be bad. Like ass. someone on the Lakers being like, "Yo, hook me up." With some <laughs> I, tickets. I wouldn't be surprised. We're family. I, I get uh, somebody that uh, people have said I look like is um, he plays uh, the guy on Two and a Half Men, not Charlie Sheen, John Cryer. Oh, yes. And so I was fully expecting... You do look like him. Yeah. That <laughs> totally makes sense. I was fully expecting him to be on there somewhere. Oh, man. And have you made connections with these people, like gone on a phone call? A couple call? of them. Okay. Not like a phone call. I've reached out through like Instagram. Uh, you guys are snapping each other. And then, <laughs> what's up, Sibby? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. And so 
Yeah, nothing like too crazy. But legally, you do have like the right to access the information of the donor and actually find him and truly look him up. I think so. I think I can at least know who he is. I think it's still up to his permission if I can meet him or not. Oh. I think. I could be totally wrong. They could have changed that or something. But, um, but yeah, I, I could figure out who he is. Would you rather also, he, if one of, like, the half-siblings had already met him, would you rather just, like, talk to that half-sibling and be like, what's oh, he like? percent Rather than having to really yeah. connect with him one-on-one? -on -one? Exactly. Do you know how old he is right now? Can dig, like, could you calculate that? Uh, he, he was probably in his mid twenties when he, so he's probably around like fifty, around like now. I, my dumb brain was like, what if he's the same age as you? But that's not, <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> I, I'm probably close to the same age he was when he donated. Right. right. Yeah. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Matt. Do you have subscriptions that you forgot about? Because I sure do. There are so many times where I've signed up for a streaming service or maybe a food delivery service, and you sign up with one email, then you maybe think, oh, did I sign up for that? You sign up with a second email, different phone number, and these things start piling up. But Rocket Money has helped save me so much money because they alert you when you have subscriptions maybe you forgot about, and it is truly life-changing. I have saved so much money thanks to Rocket Money, and Matt, why don't you go ahead and tell us what Rocket Money is? So Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. And with Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it for me in just a few taps. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with the customer service for you. I also love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. It truly is when you set your budgets and it's like, you spent $300 more this month than last month. I'm like, oh geez, gotta maybe slow it down on the, <laughs> on the dates. That's right. Or sometimes you'll say, hey, you spent you know 500 bucks so far this month or 500 bucks less than you did last month. And I'm like, ooh, a little bit of girl math, bonus money right there. So <laughs> it truly helps me uh, budget my life. And I love Rocket Money so much. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash hoot. That's rocketmoney.com slash hoot. Rocketmoney.com slash hoot. And now back to the episode. So ask him if he has any back problems. <laughs> Just that he Honestly, though, I was born left-handed though which is interesting really yeah is that genetic i i think so I, th I think it's like a recessive trait okay again not a geneticist fell asleep in biology almost every day so like <laughs> you know punnett squares are kind of lost on me yeah but um you know I was born left-handed and then my mom put me in t-ball and my coach just refused to I was the only left-handed kid, and he refused to teach me how to bat differently. So he what kind of coach is that? Yeah. yeah, I know. Good grief. And so he forced <laughs> me to bat right-handed, and I was just so young that it ended up, like, switching my handiness. Wait, so you write, and you're now a righty? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. So that probably crossed some wires in your brain growing up too. Yeah, yeah. I really wonder what kind of like the long term effects of that are. I think it's probably a good thing just to like have to re like they say, you know, if you brush your teeth with your non dominant hand, it helps rewire your brain. Yeah, yeah I've like heard that. Be able to, it's just crossing new things. I don't know. I'm, Should I'm I switch taking, back now? Just that would be kind of sick. Do the second half, just lefty. <laughs> <laughs> the second half. Yeah. I hope I get more than 50 years. I guess, yeah, sorry. <laughs> do you get pretty anal though when you go to like a restaurant and you're like, guys, I got to sit on the outside. I'm left handed. <laughs> I wish, dude. That's a great excuse, though. Right. Just sit on the outside. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, you're, they eat with their left hand and they don't want to like run, bump oh, into yeah. the other person. There was some stat too that like they used to think left-handedness was the devil's work or something, and so a lot mm. of people like the statistics of how many people were left-handed was so low. And then at some point they were like, actually, this is just a genetic thing. <laughs> and then within the next few years, the amount of left-handed people skyrocketed. And it's like, well, the reason why is not because there's more left-handed people. It's just... We stopped killing yeah, them. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we stopped throwing them into the river with like stones tied to their feet. Yeah. So being left-handed is a very cool thing. 
but thank you. Do you consider yourself a lefty though? No. Oh, you don't. No, not okay. at all. What does that mean? You're left-handed, but you don't consider yourself a lefty. He's left? not. Now he's a oh. righty. Oh, yeah. I just it's been long enough, and if I try to, it looks like chicken scratch. If I try to write with my left hand, yeah. So you're already, yeah. Um, you follow Mark Cuban on LinkedIn. Can you tell us about that? I do. <laughs> When's the last time I logged into LinkedIn? I don't know, but I love looking at people's LinkedIn who don't use it, and yours is pretty funny. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, he, if he just follows him, or do you mean like it, it is a mutual connection? No, like, no. It's like you go to the bottom sick. of his page, and it just says voices he, you, voices he follows, and it's just Mark Cuban. <laughs> it's yeah. just him. And she's the only person you follow on LinkedIn. <laughs> that was probably when I was really big into Shark Tank. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you, so you don't use your LinkedIn frequently, right? No. Do you remember, do you remember the last time you logged in? God, it would have had to have been when I still worked in like film and TV. Um, would that be uh, Queen City Sessions and Bearcats, Bearcats TV. TV? Holy shit! And I also that know that from college. And you did an internship in Munich. I I did do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I did a study abroad in Munich, and uh, I worked for this company called RFT Rundfunk Technik. Okay. Um, One more I, time for the captions. <laughs> Rundfunk Technik. I think that's how you say it. Um, that was really fun, though. They, dude, they were cutting edge technology. Like they were helping develop like 5G for the European Olympics or something, so that it could be broadcast all over the EU mm -hmm. and stuff. It was really cool. Um, but man, that just brought back some, Bearcast Media. Brought back some memories. What did you do there? Uh, a whole random assortment of things. Uh, Queen City Sessions was probably one of the coolest things we did. So we'd bring in like local musicians uh, and the college I went to had uh, like a pretty decent sized recording studio. And so we'd have like, uh, if they were a solo musician, we'd have just them, but we could have like a full band in there and then we'd film like live performances. And it was a way for, uh, the film kids to get some practice, like filming like music video esque style stuff, and then for the audio kids to do like multi track mixing in a like a real studio. So yeah, it was really cool. But some, this is in Queen City or uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Is the nicknames the Queen City. The Queen City is in, like because of the band. No. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe. It's all, know yeah. It's, it's also known Queen as City. like uh, yeah. It's the Queen City, the City of Seven Hills, yep. the Queen of the West, Sister City of and Rome, and the Blue Chip City. Blue Chip City. Yeah. I don't know about that a one. A Blue Chip. Like well, when I read it, I was like, wait, like like the Blue Chip Spicy Challenge. Like did it originate <laughs> there? But it's uh, actually a blue. Do you know what a Blue Chip stock is? It's like one of the top 100 stocks. I it's think. been one of the most steady. There's only like a few, but it's been the most steady, reliable ones over many, many, many years. Are okay. like Blue Chip stocks. Okay. Okay, that and would it, make sense. We and have it a lot also of is perhaps hundred it's, companies. Its most uh, interesting nickname is Pork. Opolis. Oh yeah, Porkopolis. <laughs> that was we had like a huge production of uh, like pork and bacon and stuff like that uh, back when it was founded. That's right. There were many, many uh, pork factories yeah. in Cincinnati. Um, Rich now, history. <laughs> do, do you know the song, the Cincinnati song that's in the movie Babes in Toyland? No, I've never seen Babes You've, in Toyland. Dude. Okay, well, I when I was a kid, I loved Babes in Toyland, the one that came out in the 80s with Drew Barrymore and Keanu Reeves. They sing this like Cincinnati song and they spell out like Cincinnati and apparently they play it sometimes during Bengals games. I've probably heard it. I but it's it's the same with like people that know their alma mater song or whatever. Right. It's like I have no idea. But in the movie, these people are jamming out to this song and I've thought everybody from Cincinnati knows this song. <laughs> it's like our national anthem. I yeah, I have to send it to you, dude. It's such a like uh it's a great little moment in time. Dude, I I honestly Ohio as a whole gets a bad rap. And sometimes deservedly so, because there's just not a lot there. But Cincinnati, I'm so proud to be from. Like, are, are you guys, you guys probably love where you're from, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, we have pride. New Jersey and Texas are two pretty prideful places yeah, to be from. Yeah, big time. Which I feel like people that come here, I, sometimes, a lot of times they come to escape where they're from. Correct, yeah. And I, I honestly, I love my city, you know? I think mm -hmm. we come from great places to make the rest of the world even better. That's, exactly. that's our job. Mm -hmm. We leave these great places that we're from and then 
Exactly. We run circles around all these morons. <laughs> I have a bunch of random things about Cincinnati, and I just kind of want to rapid fire to see what, oh, what you know please. about them. We don't need to spend too much time on all of them. Do you know about the Mushroom House? Have you ever been to the Mushroom I House? I have been to the Mushroom House. My favorite coffee shop is right across the street from it, Coffee what, Emporium. What is the Mushroom House? Uh, it was just It's just this house uh, that this architect built. It's really fascinating um, to look at, and it's... Uh, it's shaped kind of like a mushroom, like it has like a big bulbous end and kind of slopes up, but the ins entire side is like kind of wood roofing yeah. a little bit. And it just sits on the corner of this like random Hyde Park uh, neighborhood street and it doesn't match anything that's around it. And it's, it's just a fascinating look at. We got to show pics during this yeah, as yeah, he's yeah. talking about it. Guys, if you ever go to Cincinnati, check out the Mushroom House. Did you know that <laughs> Cincinnati is home to the world's only ventriloquist museum? I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to check that out. Do you, you like ventriloquism? You, you'll have to visit some. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like a ventriloquist? I can't stand it. Although, dude, Jeff Dunham, are you kidding he's, me? Yeah, he's funny. He's, he's funny. Awesome. I don't know. Would you? Do you think you could sit through a whole show? No. Now? When I'm at Vegas and I see like these ventriloquists that have shows, I'm like, who's buying those my, tickets? My dude, parents. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign up. There's the there's the one guy. He does a ventriloquist show in Vegas, and it's just it's not even. And funny he's just seriously singing like ave maria and like my heart will go on with puppets and there's it's mm. not a comedy show yeah what and are we people, doing here that kind of sucks <laughs> i feel no, like people eat it up he was on america's really? got talent he has a residency in vegas my parents asked me to buy tickets to go see the show and i told this to other people and everybody's parents apparently love this guy I feel like ventri ventriloquism is made for comedy, though. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like if you're if you have the talent to be able to <laughs> sing with your mouth closed, just sing normally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That would be the one. Like I want to support my kids in whatever activity and passion that they want to get into in life. But ventriloquism <laughs> would be one where I'd be like, all right, let's, we, let's put the dummy away. <laughs> I'm not paying for lessons. This is a hobby. We can do it on weekends and every other Thursday. Yeah. But what is this guy talking about? Dude. I want to do my laundry. Oh, God. I mean, it is impressive, but for like three and a half minutes at a time. Unless it's funny. I, dude, I, Jeff Dunham has like a special place in my heart for some reason. Actually, I know why. It's because growing up when I would do homework, instead of listening to music a lot of times, because it was too distracting for me, I would listen to stand-up comedy on Pandora. Okay. And uh, he would just come up a lot, and I thought he was one of the funniest But you're things. listening so to him in Charlie? It's like, yeah. why are you That's listening? That's half the, half the bit. Is <laughs> well, he, has, he has funny voices. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like listening to a cartoon, cartoon show on the radio in the 40s. Did you also know that Cincinnati is home to the Magic 8-Ball? No. Yeah. I did not know that. What does that mean? Like, that's where it was invented? Yeah. The, the, like, the guys in Cincinnati invented the Magic 8-Ball. Isn't no there one way. here that we used last time? There is There's one here. one right there. Oh, should we get it? Yeah, let's, let's... Oh, that's crazy. Wow. What are the odds? I had no idea. That's... I've had one sitting on my desk since, I think, the first time I ever had a desk. And I had no idea it was from Cincinnati. I, I would never pay for a psychic, but I, I, I can fuck around with a magic I eight ball. I actually, when I was growing up, was told not to ever use a magic eight ball because it's like voodoo magic shit and you shouldn't fuck around with it. <laughs> they, taught, so, they taught you this in shul? In like Jewish school, yeah. They said like you don't want to mess with like <laughs> mystical stuff. That, was like, this all like in a PowerPoint of just things to <laughs> stay away from? No, but it would be like if you wanted to like pick one up, like there was one at my dentist's office, I remember, and I always wanted to use it, but it, it like even holding this now, it just I feel like hands. I'm holding like a like a. The opposite of a sacred object. This is like a cursed object. The devil's test. Oh, you do it. I don't right even feel comfortable doing it. <laughs> it always reminds me of Toy Story. He's like, well, Andy, pick me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I don't know what to ask it. Should we ask it something? Let's see. If... Is it like a birthday wish? If you ask it out loud, does it still come true? I think, isn't it collaborative? Maybe. We should all know what the answer is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So why don't you ask, ask a question? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. About our future. Here at Hoot and a Half. Ugh, here at Hoot and a Half. Oh, will we ever have Rick Glassman on this podcast? Okay, How about that? Yeah, How about sure. that? Let's see if it happens. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Answer unclear. Ask later. Oh. Oh. Give, give what a cop out answer. I've always wanted to bust one of these open, though. I'm so sure there's bad. a YouTube channel that's done it. Oh, 100%. That's what I, yeah, because I'm so curious what side of die it is. Also, like, that's like such a brilliant idea for an object. Let's take something and then turn it into. A fortune telling device, like so genius. Do you want to, Do you want to take a pass at it? What should I What should I ask? Um, 
something about your dating life? Ooh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So currently seeing somebody. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Uh, will that last? Oh, God. This is going to be <laughs> scary. Uh, no doubt about it. Wow. Oh! We- Clip that plate at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> will you tell us who it is after? Yeah, I can tell you. Who do I know? Th- do no, I know this person? Know Damn it! I randomly met them, like wasn't looking, and uh, just hit it off. And so, yeah. It How'd was, you meet? Uh, we met at the TED premiere. So the new show. Oh, this mm-hmm. is very recent. You yeah, and yeah. Zach were just talking about this on a podcast. This was this was like a couple months ago, or not a couple, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And wow. um, yeah, just hit it off and been seeing each other since is she another creator actress no. she in the she's biz a, she's an actress um but knows like nothing about social media and i'm like thank god <laughs> nice is she in ted no oh, okay no, her friend was and that's really trying to whittle down <laughs> <laughs> i know from his knowledge um should we do our famous 10 questions Matt? uh yeah sure sure or do you have some other topics Wait. you wanted to hit one more fact one oh more yeah fact. please one more fact. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the least metal moment of all time happened in Cincinnati. And I don't know if you know this. Do you remember when VH1 in like the 2000s would put out like the top 10 or the top like worst things that ever happened in metal history? No, but it sounds like a VH1 thing. So in, uh, I believe it was, yeah, in 2004, Motley Crue, Motley Crue led the world's largest chicken dance <laughs> at the Oktoberfest. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, people were just like, this is the worst thing to ever happen in rock history. That's pretty terrible. And that happened in Cincinnati? Yep, it sure yep. did. That, okay, that what adds were you up. Think, what were you thinking, Jared? <laughs> oh, when I was six? <laughs> yeah, I was really <laughs> invested in that. In um, Motley Crew. Okay, we do this thing on the show where we ask uh, a list of 10 questions to every guest. So you can answer as quickly or take as much time as you want. Okay. These are the 10 questions that James Lipton would ask on the show Inside the Actor Studio. Did you ever see that show? No. Uh, just very simple questions. Answer as long as you want, as quick as you want, whatever you need. I feel like these are going to be the hardest hitting questions I've ever gotten. You're goddamn pretty right. easy and simple. <laughs> we are journalistic legends here at <laughs> and a half. Okay. First question. What is your favorite word? Oh, uh, whatchamacallit. That's a great. Is that in? Is that a word? I don't. It is for me. I say that all the time. That's, really? That's my version of saying like, uh, is like, uh, whatchamacallit. So you I'm a huge to... thingamajig guy. Yeah. yeah. What you call it? What you call it? You did not go to an Ivy League school, I take it. No, 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 no. <laughs> go Bearcats, Cincinnati. <laughs> um, okay. Second is, what is your least favorite word? Uh, ooh, that's tough. Probably like pussy. Like that just. It's just so egregious when you say it. It's a crazy yeah. word to say out loud. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, that's a fair. I bet that's Zach's favorite word. Probably. <laughs> uh, the next question is, what turns you on? What turns me on um, when somebody is like talented in the arts, you know, if they can sing, if they can act, if they can draw something like that, oh. very drawn to that. And then the other question is what turns you off? Uh, if someone's super negative all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. That is the biggest, like, you know, the movie inside out. Yes. I can't fucking stand. I know it's a good movie, but the character of sadness pisses me off so much in that movie (laughs) that I can't. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Talkspace. Sometimes life can get you down and it can affect you in various ways, but it would be helpful to talk to a therapist. And if you're not sure how to get started, Talkspace makes it easy to find a therapist that you'll like. It's convenient to meet online at home where you're most comfortable. Talkspace has made a huge difference in the lives of so many people. And you may be a person who thinks seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't know or you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or, hey, even afford them. But try Talkspace by doing everything online. Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. Why wait? Sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist. But with Talkspace, you can get a therapist and therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Getting started is the important part and Talkspace makes it easy and affordable. And with Talkspace, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationship issues, and so much more. And as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash H. 
H. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash HH to get $80 off your first month and to show your support for the show. So try Talkspace.com slash HH. That's Talkspace.com slash HH. And now, back to the episode. Watch Plays it. that character? Phyllis, I think, from The Office. Oh, she's like, oh, I don't know. Oh, what was me? It's just... I, I don't know. I can't stand it. <laughs> so she needs an April in her life to yeah, exactly. her up. whoop her ass into shape. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Uh, I mean, fuck just has so many uses, you know, and so many inflections that you can put behind it. Can you share a couple of your favorite fuckerisms? Uh, just like the, the oh, fuckerisms. That's a hell of a word. <laughs> I just came up with that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the classic, just like, what the fuck, you know, because you can say that in so many different ways. Um, are you fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of those, just any, any which way you want to use it. It's kind of, do you ever get really, really angry? No, no. Yeah. You have what I call the default smiling face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's people who have like resting bitch face, but you have like a, your default is just like, kind of like, no, I'm, I'm just happy just to be here. Happy to be here. <laughs> that's, that's been my whole demeanor all my life. Really? Yeah. Do you and Zach fight at all? Uh, has he ever made, we definitely butt heads. I don't know if we fight per se, but with Zach, it's kind of like his way or the highway sometimes. And, uh, it's uh, it's so f infuriating to mm. kind of like try to fight him against his way, uh, and so we'll butt heads about that. Has he ever made you cry? No. God, oh, he's never no. made you cry. No. Oh, must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> My co-host have made me cry. <laughs> um, what sound or noise do you love? Ooh, sound or noise. Um, I do love a good lawnmower. I also love the smell of a lawn, like cutting the grass. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like a, a sit, like a sit sitting on the lawnmower or like a push one? Either one. Just the it's just so settling to But what me. about a leaf blower? No, yeah. that's like high pitched. Those are the oh, worst. Get that yeah. out of my I think feet. they ban them in LA and they're gonna take effect in like twenty twenty six because they really? ruin my Monday. There should only be one day you like blow the leaves. It's and then... supposed to be on Mondays, but even still they're so it's it literally just like ruins my day it's no unbelievable way. yeah they're on my street for the entire day on monday <laughs> it's all i hear you can't you can't leave the windows open <laughs> and the next question is what sound or noise do you hate Ooh, um, leaf blower no, <laughs> leaf blower uh somebody throwing up oh if i really? hear somebody start gagging it triggers my gag reflex immediately i kind of like that you really? like the sound you of psychopath. it? It's well, it's like your thing where if you're sleeping in and someone else has to wake up early for like a flight, oh, love that, and you hear them like shuffling and like it's six a.m. and you're like, I don't have to wake up. If I hear someone throwing up, I'm like, wow, thank God that's not me. Like that sucks. <laughs> and you I kind of have like relief. a relief. So you don't yeah. get any reaction from hearing it though. No, no, no. I'm just like, oh. I know what that's like, but whew, that's not me. Thank God. <sighs> if oh. I see it like physically. I might be not the best, but if someone like throwing up in a bathroom, like at a party or something, I'm I'll, just like, I have to leave the. Oh, you can't deal with it in the vicinity. Yeah. Huh? Have you ever had where someone throws up and then you throw up just because they did? Oh, a hundred percent, dude. Like during college, like at parties and stuff, if somebody <laughs> went a little too hard in the paint, you know, mm -hmm. and you just hear them chucking in the bathroom. It's like I gotta find it's the like closest contagious? <laughs> immediate sink or something. Yeah, they say though, like the. Puke, though, is deep down in our, like, biology, it's supposed to create those reactions for us to want to puke because that means, like, someone has been poisoned or mm -hmm. the food is bad. It's oh, like, it's like this so it is contagious on purpose. Yeah, I love it when, is. like, little things like that trigger our, our lizard brains, you yeah. know, yeah. just, like, our evolutionary thing. Mm -hmm. It's so fascinating to me how we're still animals deep down inside. Uh, what profession, other than your own, would you like to attempt? Uh, either something with animals or I, there was a good period of time where I was considering going into like neuroscience. I find the f human brain fascinating. Um, so that was like a big one for a long time, but what's now, your favorite lobe? Uh, probably the occipital. Oh yeah. The vision one. Yeah. It's right in the back. I, I, I think it's 
fascinating that our vision is like it's front facing but it's all controlled from the back yeah yeah like that's really where the the movie screen is of exactly. what we're like seeing where yeah. does it travel through the through the center around the top around the sides i couldn't tell you that my guess would be the fastest way it's the, straight, straight a back. to b you yeah, it's know? the optic nerve i think right yeah and isn't, that... isn't the eyes the only part of the brain that's like outside of the skull like it's oh. technically a part of your brain right interesting Cur yes i didn't yeah. think about that that is kind of fascinating, though. Wow. Yeah. So I, I love the brain. But now, I mean, it's too late to go back and try to study neuroscience. But when I retire, I would love to work with animals. I love them. Any certain types? Like, what, reptiles, mammals, uh, birds? Honestly, any type. My favorite, like, besides dogs and cats and stuff like that, are, uh, like, cows. I love oh, cows. Yeah. Have you ever pet a cow? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I have. I, I feel a special connection to cows. I really do. They do kind of. I see some videos where they're just like giant dogs, like mm -hmm. they're playing with a ball, oh, can lay down with you them. in their lap. Yeah, they're they're the cutest animals on earth. And actually, I went with uh, Heath and Mariah to the Gentle Barn, Gentle Farm, something like that. It's up in like uh, Simi Valley, or so somewhere out there. And uh, you can you can go there. They have like a whole petting zoo. You can like hug the cows uh, on certain days. You can go like cuddle with them. You can just lay with them. I want to go back. So we got to go, Mike. That sounds like a good field trip. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, it's it's the best place on earth. What's your it. favorite burger place? Favorite burger place? <laughs> <laughs> Going from how much we love cows to now. I'm kidding. We don't have straight to, to the beef, dude. I'll answer that. A fucking Wendy's Baconator. Ooh, that hits the spot every time. Do you not have a? Oh, I can differentiate moral... the two. Yeah, okay, okay, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I saw some TikTok about a guy talking about, like, if the apocalypse happens, you want to raise rabbits instead of chickens. And he's basically has, like, a hundred rabbits and a farm. And he's like, these are meat rabbits. <laughs> and he's explaining how, like, chickens have a lot more food you have to give them. They don't replicate as fast. But right. Rabbits, they replicate super fast. But... The comments were like, Jesus Christ, why does this guy <laughs> keep saying monster. meat rabbits? Like he's talking about meat rabbits. And then someone was like, my grandfather tried to do meat rabbits once. And he came back in and he never did it again because it's like. <laughs> I've had rabbit. Oh, really? Yeah, I had it, it in Australia. Um, It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. They're I, too cute. Yeah, they're Can't, way too yeah. cute. I just did it for the hype. I was like 12. <laughs> for um, the yeah. Okay, and no offense to anyone who does any profession, but what profession would you not like to attempt? The probably like a first responder of some sort. Yeah. I just don't know how I do it in like a high pressure situation like that. Or like I have the utmost respect for first responders, but also like military people. Mm -hmm. Like I I know I'm a bitch. Like <laughs> I could not do. It. I couldn't go into war. I couldn't. Yeah. Like. I couldn't do that. No gunshot victim, arm falling off, car accident. You Hell gotta resuscitate. No. no. Dude, I treat couldn't even make it through Boy Scouts. What are you talking about? <laughs> like... Fair enough. Uh, the last one is if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, hear him say? Um, uh, damn. Probably hear him say something like, uh, like, do you want, do you want me to take you to your family members or something, Aww. you know, something like that, just to know that everyone's up there kind of thing. CB 270. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get to finally meet them in heaven. That would be crazy. Yeah. Do you guys believe in the afterlife? Uh, yeah, I do. I For like sure. in what capacity? What a great question. I will answer as a, as a resident Jewish person. <laughs> uh, I, it, here's the thing. We're never going to know. Mm -hmm. And so you ever heard of this thing called Pascal's Wager? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it, but I can't tell you what it is. I think this is what it was called. Pas I think it's Pascal's Wager or someone else. But basically this idea of like you can either act as if heaven exists or heaven doesn't exist. And the wager is like you can live as a good person. And if you live as a good person and heaven exists, that's the best outcome because you did good deeds, you followed the laws, then you go to heaven, you have eternity to be in God's good graces or whatever. You could also be a good person and then there is no heaven. And what's, what's the result there? You were a good person, but then it just ends. Not super bad. The inverse of that is you be a terrible person, okay? And if you're a terrible person through your whole life and then there is no heaven or hell, 
no big deal. You just went through life as a shitty person. But the worst case is if you're a terrible person and heaven does exist and hell does exist. Now you've been a shitty person and then you're doomed to hell for all eternity. That's the worst of all the scenarios. Yeah. So the wager is better to be a good person on the off chance that heaven doesn't exist than be oh. a bad person with the chance that hell exists and then you're just fucked. I love that. So that's like a I very... I just hope it's a lenient hell. Or like... Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we're not going to hell because we cursed one time. No, I, saw. I also don't know that like anyone actually knows what happens. So if you... I think anyone who claims to know is lying because there is no evidence. Like no one fucking knows anything. Uh, you could just take your best guess. And like if you want to read the text and try and extrapolate that. But I do think... Like I don't know about heaven specifically. But I do genuinely believe that there is something that we are not seeing and will never be able to know that exists where like where are your memories where are your dreams where is the yep like where does music come from how what is in the universe like there's things that we'll just never know you people call that heaven maybe you get reunited i didn't i think you maybe told me this one time where like heaven it, the best version of heaven is every person gets the heaven that they want yes so yeah. like if you want to see your family in heaven that's your heaven if i want to like live on a chocolate cloud and eat marshmallows <laughs> all day, that's my heaven. And like, uh, Yeah, I mean, I really don't need to see my great aunt Betty or whatever. Like, uh, <laughs> sorry, you Betty. Don't I made that up, though. I don't have a great aunt Betty, okay? Or, sorry, sorry, Betty. <laughs> kidding, kidding, jokes. Um, some good, people think that this is heaven on earth. That is, a, yeah, that is a really good one, too, that, like, this cool. is the heaven. That there's a world before this, and this is the heaven that we don't, ex yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. Like, we're in it right now. This is, so enjoy it while you can. This is a bad heaven for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, you see? That, that's where also, like... See, that's where I... You get angry with God. Yeah. And so, like, I, I've i had... I've been racking this question in my brain for a long time. I've gone back and forth. Like, I've gotten really... Not big into, but just curious about the idea of, like... Uh, like a more universal kind of spiritual uh, sense of like an afterlife mm -hmm. uh, and the, the idea of past lives. So I read this book called many lives, many masters, and it's uh, it's a real account of uh, this woman who has like a lot of phobias and fears. Uh, like she's afraid of water. She's afraid of like swallowing things and stuff and choking and uh, she goes, she's been to a hundred whatever uh, therapists. No one's been able to cure them. Uh, and she goes to this psychiatrist who puts her under hypnotherapy. And the psychiatrist is recording all of their sessions. And when she goes under, uh, she starts like speaking in different voices and recanting different memories and stuff. Uh, about like these different lives that she's lived and she's lived like 40 some odd or maybe 80 some odd lives and uh, in each and almost every life one of her phobias is explained and so like the one that I remember the most that stuck out to me was like she was a little girl in ancient Egypt and there was a great flood that happened and her father and her brother drowned in the flood and so it's the psychiatrist kind of puts two and two together. It's like, that's why she has a phobia of water and like drowning and stuff like that. And so I've been toying with that idea and just diving into 80 past lives though, something like that. Well, then that's because the amount of people who are alive and the amount of people who have are dead is not everyone's past. Well, because, yeah, right now there's more people on Earth than have ever been. So it's is like, that true? Yeah, that's true. There's the there's, population is the largest it's ever been. Yeah. But then, this is also oh, wait. okay. Sorry, I was thinking differently. About you're it. also yeah. thinking about time in like a linear perspective rather than like a circular kind of thing. Time where... is a flat circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so it's like you kind of have to like really broaden your horizons about like thinking uh, of stuff in a way that goes against what we're all taught, you know? Um, and so it's just, it's fascinating. And like you, you talked about psychics earlier to an extent, I think most of them are hacks and that are just taking advantage of people. Charlatans. Yeah. Yeah. But the, I've had a couple experiences with psychics because my parents are obsessed with them Yeah, and uh, that have really made me question. Uh, I'm like, okay, there might be some sort of like, power or energy that these people are able to tap into I, I do believe like in psychics it's the mediums that i have an issue with see now that i'm also a little wishy-washy on because i did go to i guess she was both a psychic and a medium but like i had this experience when i was a child where uh i 
was at a family reunion uh, at my cousin's place and they have like a backyard area that's all cut whatever and then beyond that they have a few acres of land and it's all just like forest and so we were there and we we're playing in the backyard and I look out into the tree line and there's uh, I see a man in a suit standing there and we make eye contact and he gives me like a very warm smile and then walks behind the tree he's standing next to and I run after him and he disappears he's just gone nowhere to be seen right I was probably around like six to eight around okay. the time and then we're moving my grandma into like a few years later into the condo that she's in now and I unpack her wedding photo and I see my grandfather who passed away when my mom was two and uh i see that i'm like oh my god this is the man that i saw like standing in the forest and um so i i had that and then many years after that went to a psychic with my mom and the psychic is like holding my hand and just walked in there blind you know like didn't set up an appointment so she didn't know who i was whatever and she's holding my hand she takes a deep breath and she goes there's like a middle-aged man standing behind you and all he's saying, all he wants to say is that was me who you saw. What? And so that it's stuff like that. Those experiences that really make me question. It's like, okay, I feel like there might be something more than just this like physical plane. I kind of, I need to go see a medium. <laughs> you need to see like <laughs> well, a I legit feel, one. And I feel bad about the last episode with when Mariah was talking about it and I was being skeptical about um, Teresa Caputo. And, it, oh, and my people were like, Matt her. is being so ridiculous. He's being so <laughs> condescending to Mariah. And I was just like, I, one, I'm entitled to my own opinion. Of course. I mean, it didn't mean to bat. I, if Mariah had that experience, that's awesome. I'm just skeptical about people speaking on behalf of the dead. And I just get frustrated. Why can't? I don't know. Apparently, See, they have solved murders and stuff. I don't know about but, that, but <laughs> well, that's what like some FBI, people were the saying. The FBI would I'm have like, a medium division if yes. they're solving murders, right? So, Do they? Uh, but apparently, people in that were sounding off in the comments going, "Psychics have solved murders." I don't know if there's any evidence, but for I feel that. like you I would, would hear about that is. way more often. Yeah, there would be a whole unit. Yeah, for it. we're in the medium <laughs> there, division. There would be a psychic the spirits division, spirits and ghosts division of the FBI. <laughs> would you ever go see a medium, Mike? That's another prohibition in the oh, Jewish faith. Come You're on. not supposed to go because, like, I think that there is a lot of that stuff that exists. Like, it was definitely way more. I think back in the day, and every generation, we're further removed from like magic and stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely some weird shit that people can do and. It's tough to know who's like truthful and who's not because there's just so many p people that are faking it. And I don't know. The past lives thing is interesting. I do think it, some people are delusional, though, where like you'll see a TikTok of a girl who's like, I was a princess in my past life and that's why I'm this way. And it's yeah. like, let's not excuse your toxic behavior because <laughs> you were a royalty in a past life. That's not whatever. But there is like a this is like a Buddhist thing. I think it's a Jewish thing, too, that you basically keep coming back to Earth until you get it right. Yeah. So, uh, or it's like you keep coming back to earth until you've experienced is every it? single type of person that you can be. So you come back as like a rice farmer in the 1500s. You come back as a like cloud billionaire. Atlas. Like, I, I haven't seen okay. that. Okay. Yeah. But like you're in, yeah, you're coming back, but you're in these like different versions. And also like you're in the same universe that I'm in reincarnated as well. Yeah. There's also, like, I, I also kind of think, which is like maybe a little fucking crazy, but I sometimes think I'm the only person that exists and everything else doesn't Ooh, really exist. Interesting. And I'm the only, the, the entire universe is just me. And I sort of operate as if the universe only exists for me. And that's why, like, I can just expect things, good things to happen. And they do. Obviously, not always. But I think, like, do you, how do I know you exist? Like, this is a classic philosophy. Find my problem. friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I used to think that. And then I'm like, oh, find my friends. Or, like, social media. You know what everyone else is up to. Like, but they, it's all are, they are existing. It's all projections of your own consciousness. Yeah. It's a cloud. Like, is this wall behind me? I mean, this. I think it's in the office too. He's like, if it's if the wall if the wall is behind me, I don't really know that until I turn around and look at it. That's true. Um, yeah. A great little anecdote. Do you guys know who Mel Blanc is the voice of like Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like it's man of a thousand voices. All the Hanna Barbera cartoons. He did. He's like his most iconic voice is Bugs Bunny. He fell into a coma in his like later stages in life. And he was in a coma for, I don't, I don't know, it was a few days or a few weeks or whatever it was. And they were trying, Mel, Mel, wake up, wake up. It's your son. It's your daughter. Family members trying to wake him up. And he was just in a coma, unresponsive. And then someone decides to go, Bugs? Bugs, are you there? And he goes, meh, what's up, Doc? And that snapped Whoa, him out of the coma. What the what? fuck? Yeah. Isn't that a cool story? 
That's insane. Yeah. So there's like definitely weird things about our connections to sounds in the universe and things that we'll just yeah. never know about. Yeah. But like Mel Blanc coming out of his coma for Bugs Bunny is to me as silly as it sounds like, yeah, there's definitely something that we're not consciously able to be aware of. Yeah. Well, going back to what you said about like the wall not existing until you perceive it, right? Yeah. I'm going to explain this so horribly, but I feel like there was an experiment, or I know there was an experiment uh, that proved this like in physics where they were shooting like uh, like particles at like a splitter. The double and, split. The, yeah. The double split. Double slit experiment. Yeah, the double slit experiment. And it, it kind of proved that, like, the universe or these particles, like, didn't exist until you observe them. Yeah. Correct. It yes. was so fucking insane to yes. think. It's just, like, I, I, I don't know how to put that into perspective with, like, on a larger scale, like, the entire world, uh -huh. yeah. you know? But it, it really is. It makes you think. It's just, like, it, yeah. it does the street outside still exist? You know, until yeah. we walk out and then think that there's a street out there and we perceive that the, there's a street out there. Yeah, the double slit experiment is, do you know about this, Matt? I have heard about it. I'll try and summarize it very quickly. Okay. Basically, there's two things. There's a wave and there's a particle. Okay, a wave would be like a wave of light yeah. that you shoot through two slits. Yeah. A particle is like two little balls, let's call them, and you shoot the two little balls through the same slit. And if you shoot the balls through the two slits on the opposing wall, like once they get through the slit, they make a certain pattern. If you shoot the waves through the same pattern, they make a different shape on the end. Okay. Okay. So like the wave makes a certain shape, the balls make a certain shape. And they were trying to see what happens in the actual area where the wave is passing through the slit, like what is happening that makes it create a different pattern. And when they put a camera there to observe it, it changed what the outcome was. Mm -hmm. Simply by putting a camera, the particle or the wave knew that it was being observed. And the word knew is a crazy thing. Like it knew that it was being observed, put a different pattern. They took the camera away. The pattern went back to what it was before. So the, yeah. these like micro, micro particles Whoa. simply by, yeah, simply by have, and it, no one can explain this. It, it physically looking at what year did they figure this out? This was recent. Yeah, it's and like in the 2000s, maybe. They also did a new one, same thing, double split, but they did it somehow with time and like proved that time only operates when it's observed in like a linear fashion. Yeah. Fascinating. It's really crazy. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Primer? No. It's oh, I of, need like, to watch that. Dude, it's one of the best time travel. Oh, you're from Dallas, so you know they <laughs> shot. Yeah, they shot that all in Addison, the U-Haul place on the tollway. It's one of the most studied uh, time travel movies ever. And so it's about like a couple guys like us coming up with the time machine in a garage. Don't spoil anymore. It's <laughs> so good. So you should see it. And like I what you were talking to. about, the experiment is very similar to like I gotta, what goes down in that movie. I got to watch Primer. It's on my list. Well, Are Jared. We time? Is that it? Yeah, I mean, we've been, oh, man, we've been, I we've been say cruising forever. I know. This is like when we hang out at a brunch or something, though. We never yeah. really get this deep, but maybe we can, maybe we'll, we'll have you back. Yeah, absolutely, what man. A way to cap it off. Yeah. About <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, yeah, I go watch uh, my podcast, Dropouts, with uh, Zach and Tara. Uh, go listen to my music. It's Jer Bear, J A R E, and then just the animal bear everywhere. I've got. Uh, two new songs uh, coming out, one in March and one in May. Uh, and then, yeah, that, that's it. And then you can find me everywhere, Jer Bear Music. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for Thank coming on. Thank you so on. much for coming yeah, on, Thanks man. for having Love me, you. guys. Yeah, you're the man. That was great. Thank you so this much. This was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. If you like this episode, please go leave a like, leave a comment, go leave a review. It really means a lot to us. Thank you so much. All right. Thank Bye. you. Toodles.